Welcome to Staying Relevant with Pete Wicks and, well, no one. So Sam's still away in the jungle, uh, but we recorded this before he went with his nemesis, Roman Kemp. Fabulous episode. Sam was like a little girl. Roman was unbelievably cool and I was mostly bored. Enjoy. We got him, people. You can't leave now. We could, but... <laughs> okay, here we go. Welcome to Staying Relevant with two bestest of best pals. Look at the camera. Me, Sam Thompson, and the icon, the legend that is Mr. Peter James Wicks. Welcome to Stay Relevant, everyone. Yeah, lovely. As usual, I will be drinking and I'll be swearing. If you don't like that, go f yourself. <laughs> um, watch us on YouTube every Friday, every Monday when it comes out. Also, follow us on Stay Relevant podcast. Uh, Stay Relevant. Instagram, Instagram and TikTok. TikTok. What's yep. the other one? Snapchat. Snappy C. <laughs> we are actually joined in this episode by someone that we've been trying to get on the sofa actually since we started <laughs> he was one of our first names it's taken over a year but here he is it's my nemesis mr roman Kemp. <laughs> roman thank you so much for being here mate uh, how much genuinely did it take for you to come here uh, how much begging we're with the same yeah, agency. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the thing is, is that like I wasn't really aware of this. Like <laughs> most people aren't. No, I. You know, no one's really heard of the podcast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so like, you know, I. I, no! I, I. When I was asking about it, nah, I'm joking. I, I, I don't know who it was, but someone come up to me one day and they were like, they were like, oh Sam, how are you with Sam? <laughs> and I was like, hey, good guy. <laughs> it's like it's the worst yeah. when they like you as well. Are you sure? <laughs> I was that. I was that. I was like, yeah. What's the deal? And then, it, and then it was. And then it was. He doesn't like you. <laughs> and I was like, what? I don't, I don't really have beef with people. Like, I don't like. I don't really do that. Like, especially like. I, I don't know. I've. I've never. Especially with someone I'd never met. Yeah, yeah, that's even worse. But, but the thing is, we had met because I'd, I'd hosted something with you before, and I was thinking, oh no, he was a nice guy. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it got really. And then I and then I kept reading and scrolling and seeing how much you were obsessed with me. <laughs> And then it got a bit weird. You are his second biggest obsession um, yeah. behind my jammer, um, <laughs> who he talks about on a regular basis. As a as a competition. Not, no, not as nemesis because um, uh, my you, you you just want to be our friend. No, look, we, she's on our agency as well. She is. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> Tried on that one as well. Really? Not interested. But you were Sam's number one person when we started this podcast to come on. You were wow. a dream guest. So this is a really big moment for oh, Sam. I'm very appreciative. I can feel uh, the leg shaking next to me already. <laughs> and before <laughs> this, he was a bit clammy. Uh, do you know what? Boiling. I'm suddenly boiling. <laughs> do you know what? So, so Rome, just a bit of background on the Nemesis thing, right? Yeah, yeah I think um, you should explain. We, uh, we, we, because someone's obviously taken it really literally. So we, and they've gone up to Rome and be like, he fucking hates you. That's what I heard. So, but so, not just one person, several so people. So we have, we have, uh, we, we each talk about Nemesis, right? Yeah. And, uh, and, I, and I go, the, the beauty is, is that my Nemesis doesn't even know who I am. My Nemesis, you know when someone walks down the corridor, they're actually all they're like really nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, so you walk down the corridor and you go, oh, you're right, mate. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. And then you're like, fuck is even nice. <laughs> <laughs> and you're sitting there going, this fucking prick's actually but quite nice. What, but what, okay, but, but, but why? No. I, I can tell you why. It's because you're better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're right. everything that I want to be. In what sense though? In a presenter sense? Mate, in, in everything. In a talent sense. But I'm one behind Joel Domit, so don't worry. Like, yeah, everyone... so is he your nemesis? Well, yeah, I guess so. Everyone's but again, got one. Joel's so fucking nice. Yeah, you can't hate him. You no, can't hate you can't the fucker. Hate him. No. We actually think he's the same. He's so lovely. But I, I get it though. But I think that. Do you not think that? Do you not see it as? If you were good lanes? enough, you'd get the job. Yeah. <laughs> That's Absolutely. how I see things. So why? What jobs? What jobs are you jealous of? Well, it's amazing. The thing is, you've been around for so long. You've done so many amazing things, yeah. and you know you are likable. You're likable. You're like so are you. And this oh. isn't a loving match, but you are. Come on. Come on. Man. Come on. I'm j okay, fine. I'll be real. Sometimes you're like, <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but I, you I, got to have a nemesis, right? You have to have one. Yeah, I guess so. I so, guess so, so, for example, Jordan, jo you said Jordan North said you as well. Yeah. Jordan North yeah. said me. <laughs> Christ. I mean, we are saying we're the most hated one. man in the industry, yeah. evidently. That's what I it think sounds you're great, like. mate, yeah. but <laughs> everyone else seems to have a real problem with <laughs> <Yeah>. you. <laughs> 
<laughs> what have you so, been doing? So, what have you done? So Pete's, so, Pete's is Ovi Soko. Right. So I just want to point oh, this yeah, one out. That. Yeah, but this was made. This Sam made my nemesis up. Right. Effectively, <laughs> and, and so I need, he and needed one because we were the same management, and because he's just a very tall, good-looking, really nice guy that everyone loves. Right. Uh, that's why he's my nemesis. But yours is a, a, a kind of deep-rooted hate. So can I can I say can I say so 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 you see Jordan Jordan's on our management as well. <laughs> so you can see you can see a trend here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it just is it just you hate the people that are on the same management? This sounds because awful. you feel that like the management are only going for jobs for them. No, no this sounds worse than it is. No, but so I'm just, what it, it now is, sounds Roman. like I hate you. No, it's no, that, no, I don't. No. It's I think it might be to do with the management. Maybe it's because they tell you that you're going out for jobs and then you find out that Roman and Jordan and everyone else. Oh, is so yeah, them. that's hard. That's so, hard. So, so basically, yeah. Yeah. what you say it's is tough to be shit. Yeah, mate, it's tough to be. It's tough to be the bottom feeder. That's yeah. the thing, right? But. Yeah, no, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but but the, the thing is, though, is that like you know, I, I was again. That was you know, every time I'd hear like a job, you know, the people saying that like, the you know, I'd hear stuff being like, oh, there's this, there's this big gig that you know you could be getting. Um, Who you, was it? Who was nicking could, it? You could get, you could get this show. It's coming over from America. It's called Mars Singer. It could be big. You, you know, we <laughs> think you might get this. We think you might get this. <laughs> Fucking Joel Domi. <laughs> oh, the NTAs are coming up. They want a new host. They're really interested in you. Do you want to do it? Yeah, I want to do it. Okay, think you might do it. Joel Domit's doing it. <laughs> like, like it's the same. And Joel, listen again. Like, lovely bloke. Joel for me. I love him. He is so funny. And like, you know, it, I That's say the through, problem though. You I look say, at him down the corridor and you go, you are the most lovable. I've ever met. <laughs> I, I absolutely love this imaginary corridor that everyone yeah. bombs into each other in. But no, Where but is this lucky. corridor? No, but I've lucky. never seemed to be invited. We're lucky. We're lucky that we we are inside a world now where it is nice. Yeah. yeah. Because genuinely, like, it is nice. And one thing I would never do, I, I, I would never do, and I've done, I've taken this into radio and whatever. Even if I fucking hate someone, I, I, I'll never cuss out their work. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. like, like, like uh, uh, stuff like that. Because I think you know we're all on this same weird ship. Some are clearly just better than others. And Mate, I'm a little bit better I than love you. that. <laughs> do, you know what, do you know what epitomized that more than anything? Is Roman in first class when he sent his video to us and went, Hi, it's Roman Kemp here, uh, Sam's nemesis. <laughs> I'm off to uh, Korea, um, <laughs> and I'm then going to come and knit your job as the presenting thing whilst he's in a in a class I've never sat in before. <laughs> so, <laughs> he, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. No one believes you've never been in I first class. I've never been in first class. Yeah. You you've never been in the <laughs> Everyone knows you've been in first class. Genuinely haven't. You've never been in first no, class, in no? No. no? all the times you've been Maldives, South Africa, on safari and all your little fun no, trips. never. There's your no such thing holidays. as first class on a private jet, though, is it? There you go. <laughs> yeah. um, but it was quite funny, because when we did that birthday episode with the, with the Nemesis, uh, Ovi sent a video, and we had him on the podcast, and he was just like, I just can't wait to see you, man. It's so nice. And you went off to another job you didn't get. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> going to knit your job. And, uh, yeah, so I feel like I've done better with a Nemesis. But this is what, but this is what I love. Because as Roman said, it's, it's so true. And, you know, we do break the full fall quite a lot on this podcast as well. Like, you know, obviously you do have... I don't understand it. You do, yeah, we don't, we don't get it. <laughs> but at yeah. what point do you think we break the full fall? Well, There's never they, been one. Well, people like to think there is. <laughs> And so we basically... He really thinks that we're a, there's some sort of like really breaking bounds on this podcast. I think we do. Do you know why I said that? It's because Zara went to an event last night and someone came up to me and I really like the way you're saying, well, I'm break the fourth wall. Yeah. <laughs> and I took it. I was like, we really do, don't we? Yeah. I was like, we really... His we... missus makes documentaries and so now he's trying to do the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Again, you know again, I mean? fuck that up as well. <laughs> So, yeah, made one on ADHD for E4. No, yeah. like three or four good, of us watched it. <laughs> yeah. But to be honest with you, Zara was in that so much, it was more like Zara McDermott living with fucking ADHD <laughs> because it was mostly about the struggle she has hey, being man, around my, you. My documentary is just me crying. Don't yeah. like, <laughs> Yours is brilliant, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, well, well no, 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 <laughs> Sorry, it's I'm it up. Well, that's, no, that's a mine, mate. Yeah, but the difference is I watched his. Oh, my God. You were in mine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't even watch it, did you? Nope. Fuck you. <laughs> but I will say this, and I do mean it, and you you agree with this. It's the same thing with Ovi, is that like you have these like sort of like it's like any job, right? And you look at someone and you go, oh that fuck is gonna go get that promotion. I want yeah. that promotion. But like it's all it's all in jest and it's all fucking like it's all so funny and it is all in the interest of staying relevant. The hilarious, depressing nature of the industry yeah. we're in. It's so funny yeah. in a depressing way. But that's why, yeah, but I hate, I hate events like i don't go to events like if it's not he loves an event if i'm being paid you, i'm there mate yeah i know it. but but you're that guy yeah, like, he's that and guy. you can you can you can pull that off like thing is yeah is it like genuinely uh, like and this isn't even from a 
this isn't, I don't know how to put it. It's just like, if it's not work and if I'm not physically working, I just want to be at home. I'm the exact same. Uh, and, and I can't, I, I've, I've never been a going out person. Like, I'm always the first to leave out of all my mates. Like at my, within my friend group, it's a Kemp exit because I'm just gone. Yeah. And they all know I'm, I'll see him the next day. Yeah. yeah. Like put it this way, me and the boys, me the and the Thompson boys. Thompson turn around with him. Yeah, but that's it. Yeah, but that sounds a bit sexual. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll be honest with you, sometimes it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like... <laughs> the Thompson the, turn around yeah. is fucking brilliant. Yeah. If it gets sexual, we call it the reach around. Yeah. The, um, <laughs> the Thompson turnover. Um, yeah. No, we, we, no like, the other way, way, I don't want to see your face. <laughs> but, <laughs> we went to... We, me and the boys went to Vegas this year like and and like I even had to book like a separate room like because we had been sharing rooms like we had done this whole like US trip and I had to book the last day of, I like, followed you on Instagram room. it was great it yeah. was great I was going to say you followed him to Vegas <laughs> I was going to say you really took like, too far I was going to bed at like 10.30 11 and Vegas I swear to you right, I swear well, to come you on, man. I'm, mate, I'm boring as fuck like Jesus. I'm so boring and like I like I like the Fun, like, outdoorsy stuff. And then, like, when it comes to, like, nightclub, I don't care about this. Like, is, is that because you've done, like, breakfast where you've had to be up early for so long that yeah. your social life died? Yeah, a little bit, yes. Do you know what I mean? Like, like a little you're bit. in that routine now of I go to bed early 100%. and I get up early. Yeah, 100%. But also, I think that my... Uh, I also, from the age of, like, 23 to 27, I smashed the shit out of going out. Yeah. Mm. Like hard. I'm sure you did as well. Yeah, you no, know? no, I did a no. little bit, not in Pete's world, but like, yeah, yeah. for a normal. What person, were you yeah. raffles every five? Minutes? I was, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, but I, like, I, I know what you mean. Bluebird you lived raffles. Yeah, bluebird. You lived yeah. it though. You had a good time in your early. Man, and I peaked when I had to introduce Mesut Özil to Justin Bieber in a nightclub. That's pretty cool. That's that's pretty cool. I think that may be the coolest story that we've heard on this podcast. Yeah. Uh, Do you want to know it ever? Yeah, yeah Justin. Yeah. Just so I'm I'm in this nightclub and um, uh, tape. I was in tape, right? Wow. And, and they, and, and basically it was really weird because like when, when Justin Bieber had like purpose, uh, that, that kind of purpose era. tour. Yeah. But he, he, he basically like, you know, he had this era that was amazing and he was the biggest star in the world. Yeah. You know, it's what kind of what we've got with Taylor Swift right now. Mm. And he, uh, he basically, he came into the studio to Capitol and we started to like, just kind of, we got on cause like we were kind of similar in age. And we ended up going out that night. And then every time he'd come back to London, we would all go, always go out. And then I went to LA and stay at his place and like all this. Like, it was this weird friendship, right? And then one time he come to London and I'd just also been doing some work with, with Adidas and I'd been working with these footballers. So I had this weird mate friend group, like celebrity friend group where it's like, you've got these footballers and then you've got these pop stars. And it all culminated. I know you feel. And it, it Do you see why the nemesis thing is happening now? Yeah. Oh, I'll start yeah. The name dropping. Oh, I'm really going to bomb it today. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, literally, like the, the. So we're in this nightclub, and all of a sudden, this person comes over to me. I'm, I was with Justin, and this person comes over to me, and it's uh, it's Meza Özil, Arsenal legend. If you listen, yeah. and have no idea who that is, look him up. Fell off a little bit at the end, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he came over wearing um, no banner, a string vest. Shut right, up. but like you know, full nipple string vest, right? In a nightclub, very odd, very, was it very fancy odd. Dress? Yeah, no, uh, no, it was very odd. That Bob Marley night, and it was a little bit, yeah. And then, and then he said, "Come over." He come over, and and he goes, he, he goes, uh, "Roman, can you introduce me?" And I went, and I went, "Fucking, this is weird." I was like, "Yeah, okay, then." So and then he he um I so I go over to Justin because he's got these like you know security people around him and stuff and I said look I want to introduce you to a football player like he's a great guy he plays for my team like please just be nice to him like do you know what I mean just let him in if he wants to come into this area he was like he's, he's safe and he goes he goes yeah 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 and so I introduced them both and uh and Justin like shakes his hand and like like hits his hand like this and like you know looks at Mesut and I'm standing in the middle and he looks at Mesut and goes he tells me you're the greatest. <laughs> and then and then and then Mesut Ozil looks him back and goes, I like to think so. <laughs> That's quite a cool story. Oh, mate. And then that for is... some reason, and then for some reason in the corner of the room is Jimmy Carr. <laughs> <laughs> that is the biggest curve one I think I've heard. It was, it was so life. weird, man. Like Jimmy that Carr takes... just sat there. I don't know why the, the thought of Jimmy Carr in tape is man it was so Fuck weird yeah, I, I brought this up with jimmy and like he's just like yeah i don't know why i was there <laughs> like like he, but he was he was on it but he was in the area like like it was like he was just sat there with a you know whiskey. what i love right is and this this is why this, the, you are the perfect person to have on staying relevant because you have the exact life 
that I want. <laughs> like Pete, Pete, I don't know. Pete wants to live in a forest somewhere, but like, no, but I like, want to live there. That, but mate, that, just that with dogs is, and goats. Yeah, that's the it. coolest fucking story I think I've ever heard about. And then yeah. he goes, "Yeah, I went up to Jimmy. I told Jimmy after. You got Jimmy Carr's number? I bet you do, don't you? Yeah, yeah, of course he fucking does. Did his Christmas party? No way. Yeah, what was that, that like? Christmas party. Well, I missed out. Apparently, it used to be even more wild. But yeah, he, he was quite infamous for having these wild fucking Christmas parties. He used like to have parties. Stephen Hawking. Yeah, there. like fucking. Shut what? up. Yeah, no, like... I saw my life on my life. He used to have Stephen Hawking there. Yeah, no. really wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Party things. Yeah. yeah, but but like lovely bloke. Yeah, but like again, like I could turn up to this party, and I think it was it was me. Daisy May Cooper, like Louis Theroux. I mean, Louis Theroux! Like, I, like I'm everyone... obsessed with Louis Theroux. Yeah. One Louis... person I've not met that I'm dying to meet. Yeah, amazing bloke. I see, I was quite I was I was quite intimidated by meeting Louis the other day. Yeah. He's like my one of my heroes. Yeah, you know what I mean? Do you know who mine would be? Stephen Fry. Stephen Fry? Yeah. If I met Stephen Fry, I don't know what I'd do. I'd literally. Well, that's panic. so weird. No, mate, I don't think anyone has ever said Stephen Fry. Do you know Fry. what? It's because he narrated Harry Potter on all the books, so I used to listen to him all the time. And then he also, he's a massive. I've never seen Stephen. Uh, I've never seen Harry Potter. What? In my life, I've never seen it. But you like being at home and stuff. I thought you were going to... Sorry, not every fucking loser that stays home watches Harry Potter. Call him Roman Loser. Yes. Yes. Uh, I, no, I swear to Go you. Go out. No, but Enjoy life. No, but no, you're true. It's true. But but I've never seen it. Why? Because it's kids on broomsticks. Who gives a fuck? No. Yeah. You know they do real life Quidditch? Yes, I've heard. I've do you want to play? No, absolutely not. <laughs> I didn't even know what it is. Like, I swear... You put a broomstick between your legs. Yeah, what that. But, but it's three big balls? Yeah, so you've got the quaffle, right. the bludger, and the snitch. Yeah, I'm bored. Yeah, yeah no, no, trust me, you're not. Yeah. You're not, because the snitch is a tennis ball hanging out of someone's ass. It's <laughs> re- mate, it's jokes. And they're dressed in gold in a morph suit. Mate, see, that's it. I, I, I respect it. I respect yeah, the love. Yeah, thank you. I respect no, you the love don't. for it. <laughs> no, you I don't. See, yeah, but he's looking at me, so I have to say that. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Lie to it. Sam's surrounded by enablers. We can't add another one to the list. <laughs> I find that really interesting, though, that you... um. Because you've obviously lived such a, a fucking fun life, as you say, in your early sort of twenties and stuff. Mm. Do you? Is it hard for you sometimes to look back and be like, "Holy fuck, I've done some things that other people can only dream of"? Or nah. is it? Or can you still look back and go, "That's pretty awesome"? Nah, the most important thing I, 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 I've always said was the question I hate is um, where do you want to be in five years? <laughs> Which sucks. Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> no, but the reason being is that, like, if you say that to anyone, even anyone in this room, like, if you said it, you're better off looking back at what you achieved in the last five years. Yeah. You know, like, uh, you know, it's That's ridiculous. That's it gets depressing for me. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, but Pete, even if you, like, if I said, you know, you went to the, you lived on an island in the middle of Panama. Like, you know, yeah, you didn't think wild. you would, you got bitten by a shark, albeit a very small one. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that yeah. up. Appreciate but, that. No, but, but do you know what I mean? Like, like, I always think that there's this tendency, especially when you live in, like, London or if you do our jobs, to be like, the next thing, the next thing. And, and the reason being, right, is because, like, and I learned, and this is where I say I'm at a premium. You know, I'm at a premium from you because I have my parents. Mm. Like, and I don't mean that in a sense of like they they can get me in places, but I mean they can get me in places. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I mean it in a sense of the experience is so is so amazing. Like, you know, I'll, I'll speak to my dad, and the the number one thing he always says to me, I always like ask him about his regrets, and like, you know, my dad played Live Aid, yeah, and that's mm. insane. That is mental. But then when I ask him about Live Aid, I was like, what was it like? He goes, he goes, I hated it. And I was like, what do you mean? And he goes, because I was so focused on, mm, got to play the new song. Are Not they going to like, up. are they yeah. going to like the next song? Are, you know, are they going to enjoy, you know, how many singles are we going to sell off the back of this, this, this thing and it's about enjoying the experience uh, well enjoy looking and taking it in and not lo- looking forward and, and you know actually and that's why i have this big thing when i'm doing something cool i, I genuinely try to stop and look around and go Live remember the moment. Yeah. yeah yeah i think a lot of people do that and we're really fortunate to do some fucking mad shit yeah some amazing things that you would never get a chance to do of course and i think you have to remember how fortunate you are to be able to do some of that stuff and i think it's a really common thing for people to forget about the whole journey that they're on just because they're too like intent on concentrating on the destination where they want to be 100%. everyone's got this thing where they have to do this and they have to do this and they have to do this and they forget to enjoy what you're doing same reason i say to you about like whenever like social media i fucking hate it mm. i hate it because people don't enjoy what they're doing at the time they're too busy putting it on social media yeah you know no, I, mean? like, I, I, I love same, social media and it's the yeah, same but, thing you haven't got to, like just enjoy what you're doing yeah at that moment but i don't think you enjoy social media i think you love creating yeah very good point i think he loves attention fuck me you're you're a therapist no no but no but i no but i just mean it in the sense of like like see i'm 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 with you like like i I, if i if i didn't have to 
if I yeah, didn't have, have our job, yeah. I would not have any social no, media. Would I. I wouldn't. Like I really, really wouldn't. See, when I come out of I'm a celeb, I didn't have I didn't switch my phone on it until six weeks after. No way. Yeah. yeah. Six weeks. Like long time. So mm. so like and that's because I didn't I didn't want I didn't want that. You know, you speak to like Ant and Decker gonna pass it to Sam. <coughs> Cross hey, the fucking bridge. But listen, there you go. <laughs> listen, when 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 you know, when you speak to people like um like Ed Sheeran, name drop. <coughs> yeah. Ed will tell you, like Ed, Ed doesn't have a phone. Like Ed Ed's Email, yeah, like, no, he's not. Yeah, he's email. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, Ed Sheeran yeah, sixty nine yeah. hotmail dot yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, Do you MSN him? <laughs> yeah, like, 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 you know, you email it, and like, you know, and and have you ever emailed him? Yeah, we chat a lot. Yeah, right, Eva. Yeah. yeah. How do you start the email? Is it to Ed? <laughs> No, it's, it's literally or dear like, Ed. How do you start? How does nah, like, the email find you got, well? Probably got pet names for each other. Yeah, or, 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 is, or is it like corporate? Go as per my last yeah, email. If exactly. it's a little bit, bit little, if no, he but, hasn't but, replied. But you speak to those people, and it's like you know. I, I always think, I always think, the people get it. The, the people that last the longest in this game, and talking about like staying relevant and whatever, like the people that last the longest, in my opinion, are the ones that differentiate from what it is that they are chasing. Mm. Are they chasing their own form of happiness? Right, which is fine, which is, you know, doing these moments, these incredible things. Or are they chasing someone else's, which is like your understanding of fame, right? So like the fame, if you look at it, like I always used to say this to my dad as well. Like my dad was like, I used to fucking love it. You know, mm. my dad would have girls climbing drain pipes. Still does. I was just about to say, still, yeah, still does. But like, but you know, like all this type of stuff and he'd be like, you know, I'd love it. He'd go out, you know, he'd do all the drugs in the world and whatever. But then like, but then you look at it and you kind of go, okay, fame is actually the con of our job. Like if you've got pros and cons, yeah. the con side is people want to know you. They want to chat to you. They mm. want to come up to you. They want to do this. They want to take pictures of you, which is, I, I understand it. And it's what you sign up for. The pros is that we get to stand on that stage at yeah. Live Aid or, you know, yeah, you, get so to, you get to do these incredible things. And, and, it's, and it's understanding those two sides. And once you put the fame in the pro side, you're in the wrong world. Yeah, and you get to film those fun videos that and, you get to film. Pete. Yeah, but that's not for anyone. That's just in your garden for your little wank bank. Yeah, but I love it. I, <laughs> I, 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 say, I love the creative side of it and being like, what can I do with Pete? Yeah, exactly. What can I do with Pete? Oh, this is a much smaller scale to Live Aid. But what can I do with No, but Pete? it's true though. No, but like, listen, like, I'm not doing Live Aid, do you know what I mean? But like, it's, it's that's it, you know? No, if it, it was Live Aid now, you'd probably host it. Yeah, so. yeah. no, Joel Tomitwood. <laughs> yeah, Joel Tomitwood. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, it's so true, mate, even getting to sit on this podcast, right? Yeah, and like, no, the amount true. of fun shit we've done... I mean, even losing at the fucking podcast awards. But, like, the fun we had, like, getting the content out of that was... Who won? Choked. Red-handed, but also don't, don't you think that people within this industry as well they they don't enjoy themselves because they start being what they think people want them to be yeah, rather sure. than who they actually are, and that's why it's so easy for people to lose themselves doing all this sort of stuff is because you start catering to what you think will make your career more successful yeah, or you sure. more famous or you whatever else. And, and actually you start to lose who you are when you're at home on your own or with your friends, your family and all that sort of stuff. 100%. And I think that's one thing that you've you've done really well and that's probably because of maybe your mum and dad yeah, thank where you, you, yeah. you were with that is that you're still so close to them and your sister. Yeah, yeah. Like, because you're all within that kind of industry. So you're yeah. all kind of aware of it. So I don't think it really affects who you are as people because you know who you are. But like, and that's such a, such a beautiful thing to have whilst yeah. being surrounded by so much shite. Mate, you know but, I mean? but like, like, how, yeah, but also at the same time, I think like, you know, I'm a full blown nepo. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> like, 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 I, I couldn't have had it better. So, you know, but, but still at the same time, it's nice because one, my friend group is so harsh. Yeah. Like in terms of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. My mates are like, it is like kill or be killed. Yeah, yeah. Like, my WhatsApps are horrendous. Yeah. Like, yeah. if I do anything good, I'm getting my pants pulled down yeah, yeah. within a second. Yeah. Like, they are so bad. Like, yeah, that's so good. tough love. Yeah, but like, you know, we're all mates since we're like six years old. But but then on top of that, it's like, you've got that. I've got that from my mates. And then we, we, if I go out and I do something nice, people go, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I still love your dad though. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> I get it with Pete. I get it with Pete. I go out and people go, well, where's sex on legs? Where, where's Pete Wicks? Where's your other half? You do give off sex on legs. He, you really do. But um, you've you've gone for that. Oh, oh yeah, no, he has. Yeah. He, know, he knows what it. What do you mean he, I've gone oh, for it? You've gone for Look it. Look at the shirt slightly, yeah, a bit more unbuttoned than would normally be. See, Pete, there's uh, to me and you. We've got like similar type of tats. I've got, you know, my body, but I cover up, son. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but there's nothing else. It's, it's, it's declining. The face is starting to look like a melted Wellington boot. So you have to fucking, well, I mean, well, you have to distract people. And old people's leather. I was going to ask about like um, uh, the relationship with your dad, because it gets mm. mentioned to you all the time. Yeah, of course. How annoying is it? 
It's not, man. It's not. It's really nice. Uh, I mean that, and and you should say it like you mean it. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like, but part of me wants to think, oh yeah, fuck it. You know, oh, I wish people wouldn't say it. But look, it, it, what's the flip side, right? Imagine, imagine my dad's someone that got cancelled. Yeah. Right. Mm. And then what, like, fuck that's what that. he's got coming up with me. But that's what I mean. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm saying? Like, like it's like, what, what if that was the case? And and how amazing is it that? Yeah, it's if a I get in a cab, people love. If I get in a cab, right, the, the first thing people say to me, like the cab drivers, they'll say is, oh, as your mum and dad, I love them. They're the nicest people. That's nice to hear. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and, and it's really nice to hear. Whenever I'd say to people, people, at the beginning of my career, like people were saying, oh, you know, my nemesis in a way is Martin Kemp. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Do you know what? I can't escape him. Yeah. I'll, I'll, and I'll never escape his shadow. Like, yeah. like and, and, and the thing is, is like, like, the tall but, one. But, but yeah, but, and I'm, yeah, quite broad. People are quite scared of him. <laughs> but, but like, you know, he, he is, you know, here and my mum. And I watched the Wham documentary recently and, and, I, and I watched it. Yeah. And the first thing I did to my, was turn to my mum. Because her and I watched it together for the first time. And, and I turned to her and I was like, I was like, I owe you so much more respect than I think I've ever yeah. given you. I was like, because I didn't realize how much you've achieved. And if you've got the two people that you're most proud of and people are like, you know, oh, they're, they're amazing people and they're kind and whatever. You know, when, whenever it comes to my dad, it's like, oh, are you looking to, to live up to your dad's career? Yeah. Are you trying to better your dad's career? Fucking, look, I don't care about what I do in the career. If I can, or I feel the pressure of having to be as nice as him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, good as a person. He's a really That's, fucking nice guy. Well, Pete yeah, knows he's, but he's annoyingly yeah. nice, yeah, man. Really but nice. you know, do you know my dad? Yeah, he, he like I don't know if you ever, you, if you ever got this, but my dad has this thing where you, you look at him and you're like, oh, you're so nice, but you would never toe the line. He, he, oh, you he, wouldn't cross the you line. You would not with fuck. Him? He, like, really? Yeah, yeah. If, if you get on with him, he's the nicest well, guy Pete, in the world. Explain to the listener and how it, you know. It, how you it, know it, that, that so I did a show with with Martin a couple of years ago. Like I did the island with him. So yeah. We spent a lot of time together. Yeah. Um, and you've always said when he came out, you were like, I literally made two friends out there. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Martin was Martin. Yeah. He was, fu he was fucking great. And then I know your mum through like, animal charities. Yeah, I've of met course. Quite yeah. A few times. And weird enough, your sister wrote songs for my ex girlfriend. Yeah. So it's know, a whole yeah. mad fucking yeah. weird. Can't wait to hear weird, them. Weird yeah. Yeah. I, I, I can't, can't wait to hear you. how many I, of them are about Pete. Yeah. One, how many I of think, them are I like... think she helped. I think she helped to write one that was about me, and it was called Far Cry from Love. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll move on from that. Um, but actually, I think something you said a, a, a minute ago is 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 utter rubbish, and that's that you're in his shadow because I don't think you are. <laughs> I think actually, genuinely, you've created such a different yeah. path for yourself Thanks, and come into your own. Actually, it's got nothing. To, it's cool as fuck that they're your parents and that's your family, yeah. but. Stand alone, I think you as a person uh, have completely made your own fucking path. Uh, and that's, that's do, fucking you know what, do you know what I love as well? Because I, I you thought... haven't lived off someone else like he has with his dad. Oh, fucking yeah, dude. but at the same time, like the thing is, is yeah. Do you know what? Yeah. <laughs> you know, no, 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 no. Because because I uh, listen, I, and I've always said this, and and you, either of you would say the same thing. Like I, you know, I don't have kids yet, but kids are the most important thing to me, like in the world. Like like what I want in my life isn't anything to do with that side of it. Is you know, I always say to my mates like regardless of what you see me doing or like anything like that that goes on Instagram, you'll know when I'm actually happy when I announce yeah, that yeah. I'm having a baby or something yeah, like that. That, yeah. that for me is like the thing. And and with 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 my dad, it's like he did everything he could for me to to help me be happy. And and that, I think you would do the same for your kids. Yeah, for yeah. sure, mate. And do you know what I like is that you do your bit as well, mate, because, you know, as I said, I follow you on the gram and I, I find this so great because yeah. I can't imagine what this would be like if I like did this to my dad. Like, so his dad's brought out a book Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know when I do something, I call a message GP and I go, "Hey, mate, do you mind just giving my my video a little bit of an Insta story? Yeah. And just sort of get the views on it a little bit. Yeah. You're doing that with your dad. And no, I'll I find have that. To. I find that. Does he get in contact? You'd be like, oh, you're right. I need a little bit of help. Can you do? Do you mind putting a couple of numbers behind that? Hundred percent. I find that brilliant. But you got to think. Yeah. And again, this goes back to like with my dad. Like, like my dad was one of those people that. You know, he is the nicest guy, but but he is quite scary sometimes. <laughs> like he is quite scary. He, you gotta remember he was in the craze. Yeah. And like and like and, and so like I'll tell you a funny story, like recently, right? So we did um so we do Google Box every year. Yeah, that's the show we wanted to do. And yeah, you could be good. Yeah, but <laughs> problem is we didn't get asked. We asked. No, no. no. But, but, but look, do you know anyone who works there? Yeah, you will get it. No, I think this year they went for Jeff and Bobby Brazier instead. Yes, I did see that. Yeah. <laughs> but again, like, you know, you, you got to battle them. It is kind of like that. <laughs> now Roman's understanding the nemesis thing. He's but, like, oh, no, I get it. So yours is Jeff Brazier. Uh, <laughs> but no, so 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 this year we were doing Gogglebox and uh and, and it's always this thing. I always watch how my dad works. And I love watching how my dad works because 
he's so he because he's built this thing of like almost national treasure level. Yeah. But he's got, also uh, being a nice guy, <laughs> but also being a nice guy. Like when he does go serious, people really listen to you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and like. He, he, I'll see him notice doing stuff like whenever we go to a job, if they're like, okay, so this is going to take like, you know, and we'll be finished. So if my dad walks in and he goes, um, and they go, okay, Martin, so this, this job's going to take about, you know, three hours and we'll be done. He goes, yeah, yeah, we'll do it in an hour. And then they're like, no, 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 no. He goes, no, we'll be finished. We'll get hour. it done. Yeah. He goes, no, no, an hour. And then, and then everyone panics, right? But then the other day, the, the new one I heard this year, which was unbelievable bit of, it's almost like a power play. He said calmly as well. He, he, yeah, he, he's he's almost a bit of a power plate. The the my dad doesn't like doesn't want when we shoot goggle box. He doesn't want any of the crew in the house, right? He doesn't want any of the crew in the house. So they sit in a van outside <laughs> with yes. with cables with cables going out to this van, right? <laughs> and then and then they're like, yeah, but Martin, could can we, you know? Um, and my dad was like, yeah, but you know, if you want to go to the bathroom, like you know, come in and just whatever, blah blah. And uh, so this year, this year, and I'd never heard this one before. This year, fella producer pokes his head around the corner, and goes, uh, Martin, can I can I use your toilet? He goes, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah. Sit down though, yeah? <laughs> He's Shut making him take sit down piss. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <I'm, laughs> right. So imagine, imagine, imagine getting to the point where you can tell another man you're going for a sit down with yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My friend, I own you. Yeah. <laughs> that is, and I bet he did. I bet he, he sat did. down. He did, he definitely did. Oh, that is you don't so want to good. Him. I did. I, I love sit down weed, though. I yeah. did a job of your dad in in fucking Hull or something. I think, and it was like it, he was DJing, yeah. And I was hosting this fucking festival thing in the middle of this fucking street, and they did like a street party, so I had to go and introduce people on and do all that crap. And uh, uh, I remember uh, being in like the little backstage thing with your dad, and I hadn't seen him for ages. Yeah. And the guy who booked me also booked you, books for your dad's DJ bits. Yeah, yeah. So I'm talking to the guy who fucking Who's booked it? me. Uh, it's you, sir. Oh, fuck yeah. Um, so anyway, so I'm stood there with him and then your dad walks in and so I'll give your dad a big hug and said hello and Yusuf's like, like trying to talk and he's going, um, and I said, oh, like, you know, um, Yusuf and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, your yeah. dad went, yeah, 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 yeah. And obviously he books your dad's stuff as well. And apparently Yusuf's known about 20 years. Right. And your dad went and shook my tour manager's hand and went, it's nice to see you again, Yusuf. And I went, no, that's Steve. <laughs> Yusuf's the one next to him. And then we had a picture with Yusuf and Yusuf had it as his WhatsApp fucking thing for about oh, no. a year after, but had cut me out. No. So, oh. so all you've got is your dad and Yusuf and my arm around the side and he <laughs> yeah. just cut me out of it. Uh, and then they said to us, oh, right, you know, Martin, there's loads of like women outside who've come to see you and they, they want to see you. So we're going to set up this um, like meet and greet thing where they're going to come here. And he went, I don't think that was part of this. Yeah. The guy and the guy went, what? And he went, I, I don't think I'm, I'm just here to DJ. I don't think we're doing like a meet and greet thing. Yeah. And the guy went, yeah, but, and your dad went, nope. Yeah. <laughs> And just smiled at him and went, but I'll have a coffee. Yeah. <laughs> and, the guy, and the guy went, okay, Martin. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm saying. I've never seen anyone melt. The gig yeah. walked up with so much confidence. Yeah. And then your dad was so nice, but literally told him what to do. And the guy went, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah that's it. But <laughs> it's it's fucking he, joke. He has this thing. But like, you know, my dad, knowing, be, being my dad's son has weirdly helped me out of like a lot of dodgy situations as well. Yeah. Like, because, you know, if, especially around North London, it's quite, it's quite easy yeah. to go to wrong place and blah, blah. And, and, uh, and there's been times where you're in really weird ones and then they're like, oh, you're Martin Kemp's boy. Oh, right, yeah, fine, yeah, yeah, yeah. But then there was the weirdest one. We had, we, when I was a kid, we had a knock on, uh, we had a knock on the door and it was, uh, it was the police. Oh. And the police come around and they were like, we, we have something for Martin that, that we have to give him. And um, <laughs> we were like, what? And they go, yeah, it's come from, it's come from Broadmoor uh, prison. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Right? It's come from Broadmoor prison. And... And they were like, yeah, but we have to like, be here to hand deliver it. So do you know who Charles Bronson is? No. Charles Bronson is is the the, the most dangerous prisoner in the UK. Mm. If you want to see the film, the, the film's brilliant. Tom yeah, Hardy Tom plays Hardy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Charles Bronson, but he's also an incredible artist, right? And all of a sudden I get this, uh, all of a sudden my dad opens up this thing and he looks at it and it's a it's a drawing and like slash watercolor painting of Charles Bronson standing next to my dad. <laughs> With respect written across the top of it, Britain's hardest prisoner. And then, and then like, and then you've got this like prison wall with eyes flying over the wall that says the Birdman of Broadmoor always watching, right? And then on the reverse of it is like this handwritten letter from Charles Bronson being like, "You represent 
people like us. Thank you, mate. Blah, blah, blah. No. It's amazing. Love it like him. That is but that's the like, like, My story. dad's like this like, really like lame, like old pop, pop star, but people like that love him. <laughs> mate, that's class, man. I fucking love that. Yeah. Do you know what? Also, mate, you know, like I love how much love you have for talking about your dad. I think that's so admirable as well, course, mate. man. And, and I think that probably comes with age as well. I think that definitely yeah, comes with age. I think sure. I'm a lot more like that now. I love my family even more every year that goes by because you don't know how long you're going to get with your family. And, you of know, course. You love every fucking second of it. Oh, that's a bit no, but when you're a bit younger, you don't care. You're like, I just, I just want to go out with my mates. And then as you get older, you get a little bit more. You're like, oh, I want to spend as much time as possible. Anyway, back to you because mm. I'm going to be taking notes here. Um, you started... You did, um, what's the YouTube thing? The, the the football thing? Pitch Invasion. No, after that. Copper 90. Copper 90. You did Copper 90. Yes. And then you went to Capital Evenings. Is that what you did? No, so I so I uh, I was working for Copper 90 and I was doing half present. They, they wouldn't give me a full-time presenting role because I went there. How saying, old were you at this point? 21. 21, yeah. And I was like on their door and I was like, look, look, I, I just want to work for you. Like uh, I said, I'll, I'll shoot content. I'll edit content. Whatever you want, write content, be in it, do the whole thing. And they were like, they were like, yeah, all right. And then I was like, I was like, look. And then it came to the World Cup, and they were like, we we don't have any more room left for people to go out to Brazil. So you're just going to be the runaround boy collecting the edits and you know chopping up some stuff that we send over. So I was like, shit. I was like, what if I make my own show here? I was like, please, can I just work something around the World Cup? And they were like, yeah, feel free. So I built this show called Man vs. Football that was fucking awful. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was awful. But but I was running around town all the time and I was like, I was, I had to, I set myself a challenge to watch every game of the World Cup in the, that, that nationality's like representing bar in London. That's quite fun. So it was like, yeah, it was weird. I'd be up for that. Yeah, Pete yeah would enjoy it was, that. it was fun, but like it was weird. Like, you know, when you start getting into like, you know, South Korean bars or Nigerian bars and like, and you know, you're going around everywhere, chatting to people, meeting them. The show was crap. Like yeah. it was crap. It was crap. But, but I kept bumping into this same boy and this boy was there and he had a dictaphone every time, you know, a little recorder. And, um, and I, and I seen him, I seen him a couple of times and then I went up to him. And I was like, look, what are you doing? You following me? Like what? Like, and then, and, and it was me. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. and that's where they first met. Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, and then it was like, it was like, I was like, what's up? What's the deal? And he goes, he goes, no, no, no. I work for LBC. And he goes, I'm getting like sound bites for different fans. And I went, all right. So what? So are you finished or what? Like, you know, can, do you want to get a beer? And he was like, he was like, nah, I've got to get like thing. I go, how many you got? He's like, none. Like, he was quite timid about it. And I went, all right, give me, give me a thing. So I took the thing off him and I'm stopped, right? I run around and I just go, scatter gun, I go up to everyone, bang, 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 bang. Do a couple of voices myself just to give him the thing. Give it back to him. I go, all right, let's get a beer. So anyway, so I, I, I meet this kid. And then all of a sudden, like after not long after that, I start getting these, these you know, emails and stuff to, to go into Capital and for the breakfast show to do like do the run around boy. You know, that street kid, whatever. And I was like, I was like, well, okay, yeah, go on then. So then I go in there and I do that a little bit. And then all of a sudden they ask me in and they, they say, look, we want to offer you a show. It's like middle of the night, but you know, it'd be And your you show. have to do that live? Be your show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were what? like, middle of the night, but it'll be your show. And I was like, I was like, sick. And they go, do you know how you got the gig? And they were like, the, you know, the big boss was like, do you know how you got the gig? And I was like, no. He goes, oh, you kept bumping into my son. Uh, no. So it's like, so sometimes it's like, you know, you put it out there and you, you, you know, I mean, you know, it's that classic thing of luck is when preparation meets opportunity, right? Yeah. It's yeah. Like that, that's, that's what it is. And it just kind of fell together. And, and then from there, it just, you know, if you love creating, I'm someone I like creating as well. Like, you, you know, and and that's what I like to do. I like making people laugh. Or, or what was it. it? What was it like to go from your evening show to breakfast? Breakfast on Capital because that. Made... Why are you asking? Because <laughs> I went to. Because I went. I I I saw. Where You're I'm... in evenings now, right? I remember you. Are? You're on evenings now, right? Yeah. I'm in yeah. Evenings exactly. Right. Yes. Yeah, so... I, I love evenings as yeah, well. Man. I think it's the, the best. The best slot. I, oh. I genuinely. I, Fucking love it, mate. We used to cause carnage on it, and mate. And you know what? It's so relaxed. My, you know, my 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 best mate Joe, who, who's not with us anymore. Like he and I used to do that show, just us two on our own. And like you know, Is that where you met him in the evenings. Yeah, I met Joe when I first when I when, when I first got introduced into Capital Breakfast as the street kid. He was working for Breakfast, and they sent him out to go and do this thing. And he's like, fucking hell, is this kid from like Martin Kemp's kid? Do you know what I mean? Like, why am I having to deal with this? Um, and you know, like, like, so that's where I first met him. But after when it, when, we, when it got to evenings, you know, like, he's my boy, like, yeah, yeah, like, that's it. And like both single lads, like, can you imagine? Like we do the fun evening shows, yeah. finish at, finish at 10, 
straight out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Don't have to go back into work till four the next day. Like, it was just carnage. Yeah, that's fucking So lovely. evenings were amazing. How, how many years do you do that for? Two years. Two years. I set myself a goal. When I first started at Capital, I was like, I was like, right, I want to be on The Breakfast Show in the next 10 years. Like, by 10 years. By 10 years of being there. And how really, old are you at that point? 23. 23. And yeah. I did it in... Uh, no, I was 22. And I did it in within three years of being at Capital. And do you... Because I remember... I so I've got this vivid memory, mate, of 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 us on Main Chelsea at this point, and we were filming a scene, and a bus went past, and your face was on it. Yeah. And um, I went fuck. I want to. I want to do what he does. I was like, yeah. I didn't really. I like reality TV, but like, I, I that's what I want to do. But radio's um, fun, man. Yeah. I, I absolutely adore it. But I remember, and then you'd just been given the gig. And I just yeah. wanted to know what it felt like, because you were young at that point. Well, not that you're not young now, but you were super uh -huh. young at that point. Yeah. What did it feel like to be given like one of the biggest shows in radio? So I had I, I was 23, That's nearly, fucking nearly young, 24. Mate. Yeah. So, so I was the youngest, I was the youngest out. But you know, I, I was the youngest <laughs> at the time and I was terrified. So much so I was so terrified, right, about it. And I was so terrified of being of looking like a fraud, right? I remember the day that they offered it to me. What was it like? Oh, I, I genuinely, I was like, in my head, I was going, I mean, Joe was going, let's go. Yeah. Right? yeah. And I was like, I don't know. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah, panicked. And, and, you know, because also you feel like my life's going to be over. Yeah. I've got to get up when am I going to get to go take the Justin? No, yeah. <laughs> no joke. <laughs> yeah, you know no I mean? joke. Yeah. Like, that's what I was thinking. That's game over, right. isn't it? That if was you're doing it. a breakfast show. Exactly. Yeah. What tips have you got for Sam for the jungle? You, were, you came third, so you reached yeah, the final. Right. Yeah. Um, how fucked have you that you didn't win? Not really. I yeah, because like I, I think it, completing it is the best. Yeah, my dad My dad actually said to me, he was like, you don't want to win. I was like, what do you mean? Yes. He, goes, he goes, because you get known as the king of or the queen of for the rest of your life. Yeah. Like, and that, that would be how they headline you. Yeah. Um, and now I'm just, point. but then I realized I'm just still now Martin Kemp's. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like, so, 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 you know. Martin Kemp's son, king of the jungle. Yeah. It just adds to the, yeah, yeah, adds to the it, intro. Right? Yeah. yeah, it adds to it. And, and so, but no, nah, but, but to be honest, when you, when you get out there, you'll, you'll know. Your main thing is get to the final. Get, hey, I just, that that that'll be that'll be in your head when you get when you get to about six people away you'll start thinking oh I want to do the um cyclone cyclone that's I what really, I said to Pete I said I want to do the cyclone. I really want to do the cyclone that'll be it I've never seen it so I've, I've never been more <laughs> nervous and I've never been more nervous in my life than when when you're sat around that fire pit and Alan and Decker going son it might be you. When they say that to you, it will send the shit through you. Oh, like, no. like, also really good accent as well. I yeah, used to love man. watching your accents. It might be you. Yeah, man. It like genuinely that 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 will freak you out. But I think in terms of in terms of uh, if you see Sam playing with a ball, it's because you've realised that what they wrap your rice and beans up with is like this like car like paper like this cardi paper. And you can make right? it into a ball to throw. Make it into a ball, and there's 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 uh, they also put elastic bands around it so what you should do is take the elastic bands off and then keep adding to it and adding to it and adding to it and you'll soon you'll get to a point where it's like a like a football and so that's wow at least you have like that yeah. love that shit yeah. like, mate thank you for that though i do appreciate all the that's fucking right. help on that because i'm fucking terrified no but i wish that someone had told me yeah, how yeah. hard it is and he got to the final yeah, but again, there's a massive difference. Like, Roman's really charismatic, friendly, likeable, <laughs> relatable. Um, and, well, you're not. Can uh, you do any accents? No, no, I can't. Impressions? I'm terrible. No. no. Mate, I don't have any party tricks. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. I'm just... Hey, look at me. But do you know... <laughs> I can do this. I say Sam all the time. There's only so many times that you can fall off a hammock and uh, sort of fart on someone before it becomes quite aggravating. I, I know exactly the time. I, I, I know the Chaotic. type of person that, that Sam's going to be in there. Sam's going to be the first campmate to name an animal that comes in. Yep. Yeah. You'd be like, oh, Roger's back. Yeah. You'd be like, it'd be a fucking ladybird. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but on a serious note, I said this too. I, I think if you're yourself, then, I think you'll be I good, man. I think you'll win it. I think you'll win it if you're yourself. Oh, genuinely. Jesus um, just nah, because, mate, it comes across. And, and like, it, 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 uh, genuinely, if you are just yourself, you'll, what, you'll, what you'll see is the game players. And that'll freak you out. Really? You'll see people, people that, do all of a sudden, you'll hear the camera move and people go, mm. no, yeah. no, yeah. really? Yeah. Does that happen? So you, because they're fixed rigs, aren't they? So they go, eee. yeah, you hear it a little bit. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you'll see someone step up and then like, you know, that's where we, there was a few arguments in ours. Really? Because they were like playing up for Andrew cameras. Maxwell and Ian Wright got into a big, big fight. I guarantee it was Ian Wright calling out Ian, wasn't it? Yeah, I knew it. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 The, the thing is with, with things like that, what, when, you would for example, that. Yeah, but I, I'm very different. You're joking. He'd be in the, the 
there's the shower scene with yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, of course you <laughs> Look at that photo we've got framed there yeah. over, mate. He fucking loves it. I, I, like, I'm stuck because I don't overthink or I, like, worry about things. So, um, But also, I'm probably a bit more confrontational than you are. God, you'd love a shower um, scene. I don't think so. You know, I've got fucking tits now. I don't think anyone wants to see that. He calls it a, dar he calls it a derby. Yeah, I've got fucking... Yeah, it's a derby, yeah. See what, yeah, yeah, what I don't know what a derby is. Uh, derby a derby. Billy. I don't know why I would have Billy. <laughs> Um, you only just up the Derby Kelly. I've never heard of Derby. Sam, Sam, no, no he's, the, he's wrong side of London, isn't he? <laughs> um, fucking jokes. You know, do you know, I knew you were doing I'm a Celeb because uh, I heard that you were having your wisdom teeth out. Really? Yeah. How, why? Because I was like, you're getting everything prepared. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly yeah. what it is. Yeah. Getting everything prepared. He's been yeah. to more doctor's appointments in the past couple of weeks than yeah, anyone Did you meet Bob? Ever. Oh, you'll meet Bob out there. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the medic. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what my favourite thing is? Is when um that girl, what's her name? The girl collapses. Can I say? Can I say? Can I say this? Gillian McKeith, Gillian and she McKeith. and she falls over, and before she even hit the floor, and goes, "Better get Bob." <laughs> and he's thing. already mic'd up, mate, mate. When Gillian McKeith hits the floor, right, because she fakes it, right? She fakes fainting. Yeah. Have you seen this one? Mate, so do you know Gillian McKeith? Brilliant. She was a nutritionist. She's not, she's not the bird that talks about shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And do you know what? Bag it, bag it. And she she goes like this, right? And she she didn't want to do the trial, right? So she fainted. And she goes, she goes oh, like that, right? And then fell to the floor. And laughed. But then she fell to the floor, but then realised that her skirt had ridden up. So she goes like this. She goes, she goes, oh, and then you just see. <laughs> um, do you know what as well which I fucking love is one of the guys because basically the public are savages and they picked her for everyone she yeah, hated them she was yeah. crying and shit and so the public is just evil going to the and one of the guys when they go it's it's like Jillian's like seventh task in a row and she's literally like oh no and they go it is you Jillian yeah. and, and then and then she gets on one of the guys goes have you no shame? <laughs> to, the, to, the, to the fucking viewer, he goes, have you no shame? And you can see the viewer going, nope, none at all. Yeah. Vote for it again. And she passes out and just starts laughing, going, well, we better get Bob in. And she gets her feet put in the fucking oh, position. I love it. It's so good. I don't even know how we got on that, but yeah. Hey guys, we normally keep it light on this podcast, but this is just a trigger warning. That in the next section of the episode, Roman discusses depression and suicide, which he has explored in his documentaries. If you're not in the right headspace to hear this, please skip forward to hear the rest of the podcast. Remember, help is always available. You can contact the Samaritans 24 hours a day at 116-123. Your documentary, which has won an award, which I've seen, which is fucking amazing, genuinely. Thanks, um, You've just done another one, though, haven't you? Yeah, just done another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah fucking yeah, hell, yeah. mate. He's I mean, fun, yeah. Is that the kind of route that you want to be doing, like the documentary stuff? Like, I know it's the, uh, they're, they're tough subjects that you've done, but they mean something to you and it's a passion project, I imagine, for, for yeah. you. Yeah. I mean, the, to be totally honest, like, when it comes to the doc, I, like, the first one that I did, I did that selfishly because I knew that the BBC would give me access to the best therapist and I knew that they would give yeah. me the access to the best professors and people that have been through it. Is my honest answer. Like, That's a good like, answer, mate. Fair. Well, but like, you know, if someone goes to you like, oh, can you, you know, would you be interested in this? All of a sudden I start thinking, you know, in my head at that time, I was so devoted and like, I was just like, I, you know, I've lost my best mate. I, I don't understand it. Why is he gone? Like, you know, I need to figure this out. And it was really like amazing therapy for me personally to do, you know, so it but was in, my own journey. Right, and the I, process I, of doing that though, yeah. what you managed to do is create something that related to so many people and helped so many other people. Yeah. Which is, which is kind of the... But it was just being honest. Yeah. Like, you but, know... But also, mate, before that, yeah. I heard yeah. you talk about it on the radio. I heard yeah. it, mate. Live yeah, yeah, yeah. On the uh, radio. Yeah. Did you get told live on the radio? Because you left, didn't you? So Joe obviously was, you know, the, my best mate, like ridiculous. And, um, you know, go work together, you go out together and all this type of stuff, right? And um, and then I was doing a show, uh, I was doing a show in the morning and, and I came in and he wasn't at work. And I was like, I, was, I must have like stayed up at some girl's house or something like that, whatever, whatever. Oh, it's just late. I'm going to absolutely cook him when he comes in because I'm like, you were fucking late, blah, blah, blah. And... Um, and then the hours just kind of kept going and then it got to like seven and, and I was like, oh, you know, so you start to worry a little bit. Yeah. And all this time I'm still doing the and show. You're live, live on air. air at the time. Yeah, I'm still yeah. doing the show. And so in my head, I'm like doing these links on air and I'm also thinking like, come on, man. Like, come on, bro. Like, you know, get up, get up. And then I finished this link. It's probably about 7.40. And... 
And then my exec walks in again and I looked at her face and I knew. And I looked really? at her face and, and I looked at her and, and I said, um, I said, he's gone, isn't he? And she just like she just said, Yeah. And then she... and then it was and then I don't remember what happened. Um I think we left the room. I called my mum and dad, you know, and I was going through everything in my head. Everything in my head, you know, has he fallen over again, you know, fallen over or is he, you know, choked on a bit of food or something mm -hmm. like this? And um and then it was only when I saw okay, instantly you kind of go into this protection mode over the rest of your team and you start being like everyone, you know, come together and you know, where is everyone? And the producer was still out with the police and the emergency services. And then so we got her back to the studio. You know, obviously she's she's just yeah. witnessed the most horrendous thing you should ever witness in your life. And she come in and, and she goes, yeah. And I remember her just saying, I, I just can't believe he's done this to himself. And then all of a sudden my mind just changed and it went from sadness to pure hatred. Really? Like, I was so angry. Like, like beyond. And that's what like the difference is like with suicide sometimes like, in grief because you're like... You know, and we're taught like to to do this thing where it's like, you know, you shouldn't hate someone when it comes to to suicide. Or, you know, people always tell you, you know, it's not selfish, it's it, you know, it's their choice, it's this thing. But in my opinion, it is. Because in my opinion, it is a form of, of selfishness because you're not getting rid of that grief. You're passing it on to every single person that loves you. That's it. That's all you're doing. For the rest of my life, I will have that. Yeah. And for the rest of his mum and dad's life and his sister's life, they will have that. Did you have any inkling that that was going to be... No. Nah. He didn't speak about it once? But, like, it couldn't be more opposite. Really? Like, could not it's be fucking more opposite. Like, like, when I say he was the happiest person you've ever met. You found anything out since then? No. Not at all? Nope. So you still... I was, like, I, was like, I want to see his bank. I want to see this. I want to see yeah. this. I want to see this. I want to see that. I want to know his uh, internet history. I want to know this. I want to... Nothing. But that's the <sighs> thing with, with mental health is it's quite often people see the front that people put on and don't know what's going on internally. And, of course. And that's why I always say, like, when it comes to the whole mental health thing, everyone, you know, says talk and do this and do that. But actually... It's it's something you can't cure. It's a, it's a struggle you're gonna have for the rest of your life, and it's about finding the better days over the over the, the bad, the, the kind of the bad days. 100%. My mum, my mum's. Uh, there's a similar story I talked to you about after. That yeah, is, that is similar. So I get the hatred thing. Like, like I understand. I sort of understand what you mean by that. Yeah, yeah. Because it is. But that's from an intervention stage, right? Yeah. And, and what you're saying there is that there isn't there isn't a cure for it when 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 you're at this stage now, where when you are a perfectionist at your own mask. Mm. There is no cure for that. No. Yeah. Nothing you say to that person will change that. Yeah. Yeah. However, if you would say, it, genuinely, if you say to me now, uh, you know, I will always say I feel some form of responsibility. Of course I do. Because mm. if I had had a conversation and I'd known about it, I am 99% sure he wouldn't have done that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Because I'm 99% sure that when I see him, he will go, sorry, mate, I fucked up. Yeah. Right. And I, and I, know, I know that. But like, when it comes to the intervention side, it, everyone is professional at it. So you can't, you know, it's really hard to break that. And that's why my focus, like, especially in the new doc is, you know, that you can watch on BBC Um the, in We the were ever going to plug something. This is probably yeah. the thing to plug. Yeah, to be plug fair. this, yeah. But like, you know, that for me is, is it's about what, what has to be happening next. And that's <laughs> prevention. And, yeah. and that's like, uh, if, for instance, if I said to you, yeah, uh, right, um, Oh, exactly what you have been doing, right? With with I'm a celeb, Sam. You're going into the jungle for four week, three, four weeks, right? Your first thing, if I tell you this is coming up, your first thing is I need to prepare for it, and I need to know what to do. How, how do I deal with this when this happens, and mm. what do I do when this happens? We all know as adults that the kids of the next generation are going to go through depression, anxiety. Mm. Um, you know, anything, you know what I mean? ADHD or ADD or anything like that. But there is nothing that prepares them for that. And there's no, there's no outlet for them in their own school that says how to deal with those things. And that's why, like, you know, when you look into it and you look at things like mental health support teams that do help kids understand why they're feeling down, you know, if, if a child experiences sexual, physical abuse, emotional abuse, or, you know, is it growing up in a family that is really sh like hard, 
they've got no one to talk to. And, and the schools that do have these support teams, the rates in terms of success rates and turnarounds and even behavior in school is unbelievable. And, you know, it was sad for me because in this doc, you go to the government, you say, okay, you've got, you've got this thing that's going to bring down these numbers, that's going to bring down these suicide numbers. Because when it gets to the point of, am I going to take my own life or not? They've been through that and they know what to do. They know mm. how to handle it. And you look at the government, you say, okay, so, so you're going to put these in the schools. And they go, yeah, yeah, we've got our target to put them in uh, 36% oh, yeah. of schools. And you go, just do it in everyone. Yeah. But, but even as a target, like, mm. like again, like if I said to you, like back at school, what did your teacher want you to get? 100%. Yeah. If you went to your teacher and said, I'll get 36%. They'll say that's that's a fail. Like yeah. and then and then they come back and they go, they go, oh, 50%. Why is it so hard as well? Why don't you just do it? Because because man, it, politics is all short short term. Yeah. It's 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 every four years. So yeah. so Keep you know, you're in there, isn't it, really? Yeah. So it, you know, it's hard, but but that's why, you know, but in terms of my next push is always kind of like that. Yeah. Mate, that's fucking brilliant. And we have never, to be honest, on this podcast. So it's quite we, serious for you. No, 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 <laughs> mate. We we wanted yeah. to bring it up because it's something that you should be obviously so proud of. And and uh, I think we don't normally get that many reputable people kicking about on staying relevant. Oh, so it's an absolute it. fucking pleasure. Um and it's really nice for you to insult every other guest we've ever had on the show there, mate. We don't really get reputable <laughs> people. So uh, No, um, what I meant no, was is it, don't get many, do, do you know what <laughs> get many yes. you know, this reminds me of is is the NTA. I knew you were gonna say this when um we were interviewing someone and Sam lost interest in the interview and uh started running after someone else going give us the microphone back and then had him someone else mid-interview and i'm not even joking i went we were mid talking to somebody went oh my god it's piers morgan took the microphone and ran off to piers morgan and the person was just stood there like eh? who are you interviewing <laughs> chloe burrows and mini court oh well, they love we them. love them they're really nice they were on the pod oh right <laughs> and then as they walked off sam slapped a stan relevant sticker on their bag and went off you go <laughs> And that's why I get the job. Yeah. Fucking <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> you know what? How the fuck have we managed to like go U-turn from so many different topics? Roman, mate, Thanks, thank you so much for coming on the pod, nah, mate. Uh, genuinely, I can't think of many... I'm just going to blow our, like, our own trumpet. I can't think of many interviews that have fucking gone through so many different places. And it's all, mate, all down nah, to the amazing guests. Thank you so much for finally nah, coming on here. Thanks, man. Anytime. And just being being so lovely that I can't really hate you, even though I want to, but I can't. You're an yeah, absolute legend. But I actually legend. go back to uh, that's is the thing. I'm like absolutely Kaiser so saying the shit out of this. Yeah. Like, I'll walk yeah. out of here back with my picture and voodoo doll of you. Yeah. And stab it to death. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Pete does every night. If you lose yours, you can borrow mine. Yeah. <laughs> it's an absolute pleasure. Thanks, nah, so much. thanks everybody. Come nice on. Nice. Yes, mate. Thank you so much for listening to Staying Relevant. Probably one of the best episodes we've ever done. It's probably because I spoke I mean, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. It's quite easily the best episode we've probably ever done. Um, mainly because you took... You were know, very good there today. I know. Well, yeah. I, I, did, very, I really tried to hold it in. I tried to impress him. Normally, Sam spits on fucking burps and does whatever in front of guests. Today, you, you even did that finger thing when you're talking. Did I? I noticed you do it. And that, you know, the thing is, Roman. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so you really stepped up your game. You are professional. Do you know what really annoys me? Is I sometimes look to Pete to see if I'm doing okay, but he had his back to me, so I couldn't really get a read on whether I was doing all right. <laughs> I, I just left you to it there, and you did yeah. a fucking great job. Thank you very much. Um, but you can listen to this on uh, Monday when the podcast comes out. You can watch us on Friday for all the visual stuff and some extra bits, and then follow us on Staying Relevant on Instagram for all your other little fucking crap bits and TikTok and Snappy C or whatever you want Snapchat. to call it. Um, yeah, and, and keep voting for Sam in the Jungle because he's still in yeah, there. Yeah, do it. I know he's here now, but he's in endorsed by Roman Kemp. So yeah, keep voting for Sam. Uh, and we'll be back. Well, I'll be back next week. You won't. Yeah. Chat in a week. Yeah. What, what Pete hasn't told you, right, is that you're gonna I, be you're gonna host a show. Hey, you know that he's not here. Why don't you come on my radio show? No! That'd be fucking great. Do you wanna do that? <laughs> Let's fucking do Let's that. Let's do that. Hundred percent. Oh my god, Pete's it's gonna good. be part of Castle Break. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, yeah. So thanks for being here. Catch us next time. We love you. So much. We it, don't, we it don't mind you. We don't it, no, it hurts how much we love you. We don't Thank know you. you. Thank you. I don't know you. <laughs>